But uh, my name is Jeremy Davis. I work for Red Hat. Uh, I've been with Red Hat for 14 years. I used to come to AJUG a lot more uh, before I started traveling. I mentioned that I'm a solutions architect. Um, currently, my title is chief architect. Uh, my title's bounced around a, a bit the past couple years, but my job hasn't changed. Uh, I'm not, I don't do typical chief architect stuff. I'm a solutions architect. I work with uh, customers all across the East Coast, or actually all across the world. I head off to London um, Thursday. Um, so uh, on building applications, using Red Hat stuff, talking about application architecture, all sorts of things. Um, I, this talk in particular about JDK Flight Recorder and Cryostat comes from some of the stuff that Red Hat's done around Kubernetes. We're pretty big in the Kubernetes space with this thing we call OpenShift. Um, and JDK, has anybody used JDK Flight Recorder before? Java Flight Recorder? Heard of it before? A couple people? Okay, so nice. So this is, it's been around a long time. Um, I, last year I listened to a podcast by the lead, um, and I, I think it's the official Java podcast. The lead talked about it. It was open sourced six years ago. It's designed to be used all the time. It's a really nice, productive thing. Um, oh, you can find all my social stuff here. Feel free to contact me through any of these means if you have any questions or follow-ups or anything. Um, now that uh, X, is, now that Twitter is X, I have a lot more social accounts that I try to pay attention to. Um, but you can always get me my email is jeremy.davis at redhat.com. Oh, my LinkedIn thing is Jeremy, da you know, LinkedIn Jeremy Davis. Um, and then uh, I have threads, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Mastodon. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you're on one of those. Feel free to, to look me up. I try to post interesting stuff. Um, I thought we'd, let's just start off here with a little bit, a little demo, because demos are more fun than, uh, than slides. So I've got a Quarkus app running right here. Um, nothing too special. We'll just say hello here. So let's say, and you guys can zoom in here. Just a little, this is going to be really boring. We'll just say hello, Ajug, right? Return, and it says back, hello, Ajug. Oh, I'm missing my exclamation point. Should make them much friendlier. So let's say hello, DevNex. DevNexus. That one kind of took a little while, right? Um, let's say hello. All right, hello. Planet. I was planning for Pratik and Vincent to be here, so um, it's taken a while too. So. Yeah, you, sometimes you build an application, you put it in production, and occasionally you get sort of odd things. Oh, you know what? Didn't start doing. So I have, I have an odd behavior here, right? So what do we do to solve that? Well, one thing we can do to the rescue here is we can do a little bit. Uh, we can use JFR for this, right? So let's say, let's do Yes, minus EF, pipe to grep, Quarkus. So let's get the PID of our application. So here we go. And then we'll say, JCMD. And JCM, JCMD is a tool that we use to uh, manipulate recordings or to interact with JFR. 016, is that 75016? So um, what I'm going to say here is JCMD, command line utility, this comes inside of your JDK. So 756JFR, start. All right, so it says started recording, right? No limit specified. I could give it a flag. I could say record for 60 seconds, right? So I just started this. So it's just going to run, right? But it, it's only going to get to 250 megs, and it's going to dump and start over again. Um, now let's come back over here and do some of these names again. So I said hello to Vincent. Might have a bug in the code here. Hello, Pratik, Pratik goes fine, can we, oh, let's, yeah, hello, Ajug, Ajug's good, hello, DevNexus, and again, like, we have a little DevNexus bug here, or it's taking a long time, so we'll see what's going on here. And now, what we can do is, actually, it told us the command we can use, use jcmd dump name one file file path. File name, what I'll say, I'll just name it 75016.jfr. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to dump the recording to a file, and that's a binary file. Um, we've got this recording, say ls. Um, 
Sorry? I got a what? One file? Oh. Oh, that's all right. Just the name of the file. Did I? Yeah, I dumped. I, it's the right. It was the right PID, I hope. <laughs> let's see. Let's open up. Now, this is Java Mission Control. And let's open up that file. There we go. So I named it incorrectly, but it doesn't really matter. So if we look here, it notices a couple of potential problems, right? So very quickly, it gives me a quick snapshot. This doesn't have to show just what's wrong. If I show this, it'll tell me everything. So it's checking out all these various things that are going on, but it says it, it knows I'm troubleshooting, right? So by default, I can just check off everything that works fine and come take a look at this stuff, right? So let's see some things here. Like some of this isn't gonna be necessary. Like um, we have 653 processes running while this flight recording was made. That's because I'm running a laptop, right? It's not a server. Um, garbage collection pressure, right? So the JVM was paused for, can you guys read that a bit? Yeah, so the JVM was paused, right? It tells me that, it says the time spent performing garbage collection. It gives us some nice, some nice no notes here of things that I might wanna do, right? So it's, it's looking out for me. And then it says the maximum amount of memory was 99.5% of the physical memory available, right? So these are some potential problems that we can see here. And there's a lot of stuff as, we, as you walk through this, zoom over here if we walk through can you guys see this menu here as you walk through this it shows you a lot of things about your application so it's uh, like the threads threads kind of look okay there they're mostly green got some block some block stuff there some memory product we knew we had some memory and then oh, there's a bunch of stuff happening there right so we can we can drill through here um, and I mentioned that we're looking for events right and we have this event browser this comes, this will show us all of the events that are happening in here, right? So none of those, um, we can see what's moving through here, JDK events, security, serialization, all the potential things um, that might go wrong with this. So let's see what we're looking for, garbage configuration, garbage collection, right? So, okay, here's some garbage collection stuff. We noticed it's some really big garbage collection events, right? We can look over here and see like, okay, that was taking quite a bit of time, right? Okay, so this gives me a pointer as to what might be happening, right? I can see that, okay, I've got some garbage collections taking a lot of time. So why am I collecting so much garbage? Now, this comes with a bunch of built-in events, but you can also create your own events. And so let's come create one really quickly. I have it commented out here because um, I'm not super good at writing this. I do like the live code a lot. Um, when I took this, this job, like chief architect, that sounding job, I, I talk a lot to executives. My boss talked me into taking this job, and I promised myself every time I give a high-level presentation to an executive, I'm going to do live coding in front of actual developers. Um, so I do a lot of live coding, but I'm not so good live coding this stuff. But let's create an event. So what we'll create is event. We'll say an event, and we'll create a greeting event. And I've got a class called greeting event. And what the greeting event does here is I've extended event. And the event I'm extending is part of JDK JFR package. Can you guys see all this? Should I turn this to dark or is this okay? Better? Okay, it's okay? Or dark? Okay. Um, dark be better? Okay. Settings. Appearance. All right, and then we can do um, view. All right, so is that better? Or maybe it's the light, huh? Can I uh, let off? Oh, all right. All right, well, let's see if I can highlight this. So. What I've done is I've extended a class. This comes out of the JDK JFR um, package, right? And I had this public class greeting event that extends event. I'm extending a JFR event. Um, and I've got a string message and just a counter to see how many times this thing happens. Um, and then I've added these annotations, label and category. And so what this is going to do is I can then go into my greeting resource and I can create this event, and I can say event, whoops, event, whoops, begin. And I can say event, counter, and then I can set an event message, and I'll say saying hello to name, right? So we can do that, and then, 
And this is the method I want to call. So I have this greeting service, right, that's going to generate this message for me with the name that comes in off my request here. And then I'll return that, right? So now I've got that. And then what I want to do is say um, event commit, or I actually say event end too. Event end and event commit. You can separate these things out, but you don't really have to do that. So now let me recompile my application. So um, it, Quarkus has a really nice dev mode that'll watch this live, but the, you can't do a recording with live with dev mode at the moment. So I will now kick that off again. And let's get our PID here. And we will start a recording again. Let's see, let's see, seven, six, one, three, four. All right, started recording. Let's come back here and see what's going on here. So we'll say hello to DevNexus. Um, we'll say hello to Ajug. Looks like we're getting our error again here. Come back over here and we'll say, what was it? It was uh, 7613761234. Seven six one three four. All right, and now let's open this thing up. So now, right, shows me like the, these errors that we know we have this issue, right? So let's come over here. I can come down to my event browser. Now you'll notice we've got some Ajug greeting events, right? So that's the event that I created and it's used the folder structure. When I put categories in there, it's just going to nest those inside that category. And we can come over here and see what was going on, right? So when we, sorry, I kind of zoom this, lose a bunch of space. So when I said hello to Ajug, didn't take hardly any time. When I said hello to Vincent, it took a lot of time. Um, so now I can kind of see, and I, I guess I didn't record for all of this, but the letter V was what was tripping us up. So you'd find something that would be the same in there. And then I could come over here. So DevNexus also tripped us up, right? And what? Here we go. No. Why did I just open up all of my, um... all right, there we go. So we can come in here, look inside of our greeting service, and uh, I've got this you know, weird thing that I do if, uh, if there's a V in the name, right? Um, so obviously this is some weird code that was put in here to cause an error. Um, but you can see like we can go from you know, a very basic look at what's going on in the application create your own events, drill down, and do some debugging, and really get some, a window into what's happening inside of your class. Uh, yeah. What you do with us, because that's... Uh, yeah, yeah, just shoot, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Um, do you still buy it with a source code processor, or do you just buy a regular compilation? Just, I just a regular compilation. Um, the re and so nothing, nothing special, so just... No, just Maven. Maven W. Maven wrapper. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, just, just Maven wrapper in there. So this, this can be attached to any running process. No need of special code. Nope. It has to be run locally. Um, ah, it doesn't have to be run locally. So, but good question. Thank you for the question. There are a number of ways to attach to remote processes. Um, so anyway, so that's, uh, that's very quickly debugging in a nutshell. Thank you for coming. Just kidding, right? Um, so uh, we'll now go to presentation mode here. Um, so the idea behind doing this, right, when you go to debug stuff, like, and, and we've all been stuck with debugging, right? Something's not working. We just kind of take guesses at things. I remember we were talking earlier about No Fluff, Just Stuff conference, right? One of the best things I remember seeing a, a um, presentation there, I can't get Jared something, 
but he had this, um, this illustration about they, you know, they went, they knew they would have this problem with their code, right? And so they went through the code and they found this really gnarly method, right? They did code reviews and like, oh, this method's horrible. This is clearly where our problem is. And they spent like all this time refactoring this code and they got it down. And they did, they tested this, this particular method. It took a huge amount of time, right? They're like, yeah, this has got to be what's killing our application, right? So they went and they, they refactored it and they really optimized this thing and they got it down super tight and nice. Redeployed, nothing changed, right? <laughs> Performance was still crap. So they put a profiler on it and they realized that, that piece of code that they optimized got called twice a day, right? So, um, you know, you know, like, if you don't have information, if you don't know what you're looking for, right, you can waste a lot of time trying to debug and optimize. And so that's one of the nice things about um, Flight Recorder. Um, now, yeah, yeah. So from your flight recorder, how did you find that the issue was in that class? Like you, kn you knew that you added that code, that's the bug. But if you didn't have access to the source code, like how did you come to that well, class? I, I actually didn't record quite long enough. Um, <laughs> but had I actually recorded quite long enough, like the way I practiced the demo, um, I would have looked here and said, okay, so I've got a number of Vs and my Vs are all taking a long time, right? So I'd say, okay, so, okay, so maybe there's something, maybe I have a bug there. We can drill in, and I know where I put this event too, right? So I can go back to my event and step through it. Um, you can also drill into some of these classes, right? So where is it? Um, Tuesdays. Depending upon what uh, garbage collection summary, where, where do we find this stuff? Um, you can browse into <laughs> the, uh, the classes, class loading, right? See a bunch of classes got loaded right here, right? Um, and we can see in here what classes are getting loaded, right? Um, so, you can, so you can drill down through here, right? It's not, I, I'm not good enough to like super zoom quick, you know, through here, but I can at least get pointers around stuff and you can add your own events in here. Um, but you can, so got some exceptions getting. That's the point, right? If the product is already deployed in production yep. and running, and then you're trying to do this debugging thing. You don't have the luxury of instrumenting your classes with all these things so that I want to see, yeah, today is a beautiful day, well, today is night. You're really in trouble. So uh, how is this? Right? First, of all, first of all, I want you to take one step back yep. and start talking about what is Fred Recorder. Sure, is sure. Is that a part of the package? What do we gain by using it? What circumstances can we use all this? That will be to start. Yep, all right. So, so sort of, so JDK Flight Recorder, where it came from, um, the background is this goes back to BEA days. It might go back before BEA days, but it's really old. If you remember J-Rocket? I don't really remember J-Rocket, but I remember the J-Rocket, you know, um, JDK, and BEA had this thing called Flight Recorder. Um, it was a proprietary tool, right, that you would pay extra to use Flight Recorder. Um, Oracle had it, Oracle charged extra for it, right, so it was a proprietary thing. I think I had been aware of it. I knew some people who talked about it, said, oh, that thing's really great, we use it all the time. Okay, um, but I never really had an employer who was willing to shell out the money to let me use it, right? Um, and then last year, I was listening to a podcast, I think I mentioned this by, I believe the guy's the, the team lead, and in, it was open sourced in 2018, so it's completely free and it's part of the JDK now. Um, and so there's no reason not to use it. And when I listened, after listening to this podcast, I thought I should really check this thing out, right? Um, this sounds like a really nice tool. Um, there's a number of tools in this toolkit, right? So Flight Recorder, what it's doing, and then one of the other big promises of this is it is designed to be run in production, right? So to answer what Flight Recorder is, it is essentially the, it's, it, the equivalent, because remember it's a J-Rocket JVM, the Flight Recorder is like that black box inside of an airplane. That's what this thing is, by the way. That, that orange thing here behind Duke. That's, that's the, the flight recorder box, right? That goes inside an airplane, right? And so similar how an airplane, there's all kinds of things going on in an airplane, right? You know, the, I, I'm not a pilot, um, but uh, whatever those things are called, they move, the airlines, right? Uh, they move, you know, you're, you're, you change altitudes. All these events happen and the airplane's aware of all these various events. And then the flight recorder is just recording them, right? The events are happening anyway, and they're just being recorded. And that's why this is designed for production. It, will add, it is designed to add less than 1% overhead to your application. So it's designed to be turned on and run. Um, now, that, may, that doesn't really sound very intuitive, right? Because there's a lot of data in that thing. The way that works is that, you know, the, JV, the, J, the JVM is doing all kinds of stuff under the covers, right? Or, or behind the scenes while it's running anyway, right? It's moving stuff around. 
um, doing all kinds of optimizations. The way it does that is it looks at these events that are coming through the system. So this event browser, all of these events, not the one I added, right? But all of these other events exist in the JVM anyway, right? And so they're already there. All Flight Recorder really is doing is, is telling it, we're gonna hang on them in, in thread local buffers for some period of time and then get rid of them. And that was when I did the little, uh, did this, the start method here. Um, now I can't see it. So when I did the start and it said, uh, no limit specified using max size of 250 megs, that's how much it's gonna store, right? So these events are all popping through the JVM anyway. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna hang on to these in a thread local buffer. When it's done, it's gonna write those down to disks, right? Um, and so it's super, super efficient. It's already recording all these things for you. And they said that if you do, if you turn on like everything and kind of max it out and throw in your own events, you could maybe get up to a 2% overhead. But generally speaking, it's gonna be less than 1% overhead. So it is definitely designed for you to run it in production, right? And then it's based on all these events. And then what you do is you aggregate these events into what's called a recording, right? And that's when I said dump the recording to a file. What it's doing is it's dumping that recording down to a binary file, right? So it's not a text file. Um, it's a binary file. It also has some, some APIs. You can write your own application on this if you want. Um, and then it's got the GUI that we just saw. Also has a CLI, so we can look at these events with a CLI. Where's the thing? One of these lines. Here, so we can call this JFR print. So actually, what's the, what was the name of that last file I got? Seven. Seven, six, one, three, four. So you can print it in JSON, you can print it in XML. Um, so you can write your own API. If you want to visualize this stuff, your stuff yourself, you can do that. Um, and that kind of, the second part of the presentation is uh, an example, has an example of that. So when we get in, get in here, in, uh, come on, browser. It. So this is Cryostat. I'm jumping ahead here. I'll come back to this in a second. But in Cryostat, this just uses those APIs to visualize this stuff. So you can see, maybe, <laughs> maybe we can see an example of this being visualized. Um, uh -oh. But uh, we'll have to take another recording. All right. So, so the so the answer to your question is like, what is Java Flight Recorder. Java Flight Recorder is a tool that's designed to capture the events that are occurring in the JVM as it runs and allow you to then capture those as a recording so you can use for performance tuning, for debugging, troubleshooting, uh, whatever you'd like, right? Um, anything you can get out of there. So the only time it's running is during the running. Yep. So if it's running the J command you are doing, that's when you start capturing data. Yes. So, no, so the JVM is actually is capturing this data anyway, right? All I'm doing is saying, hang on to this data for a period of time. So can that, and that, that, that's really key, and that's why it's so performant. All of these events are being recorded by the JVM anyway. I'm not telling it to start record. Well, the one that I created from scratch, I did tell it to start recording that one, right? Um, but all of these other events that are happening here, these kind of things where we're saying like a Java application statistics, class loader statistics, the JVM is capturing this data anyway. Right, but until you ran the J command, yep. it didn't go to a file or anything like that. Correct. It's just sitting there. It's, it's, yeah, it just it just hangs on to them and gets rid of them when it's done with them, right? It's just part of the, it's just part of its natural running. So when when I start Flight Recorder by telling it by using the J command and telling it to start, right? When I run that command, I say, what I want you to do is I want you to hang on to these events for a period of time because I'm interested now, right? I want to ask you a cloud question now because yeah. if I'm running on a Kubernetes cluster yep. and there are like a, there's a node which is running, let's say for example, 5,000 or the maximum number is about 500 processes are running and these are all Java processes running. Yeah. Remember at the very beginning when you ran this command, you said uh, that there are 600x processes were running on your machine because you're on a laptop. Yep. Guess what? In a Kubernetes node, that's a very real possibility. It is absolutely a possibility. Which is why, so thank you for the segue. So I mentioned I work for Red Hat, right? And we have this thing called OpenShift. Um, I, I can get, and I'll jump ahead. I'll come back to details in a minute. So it, we created this thing called Cryostat. And Cryostat is essentially, we took JFR, 
put it inside an operator that runs on your cluster that you install in your cluster, and it will it will capture your J, your JVMs. Um, you do have to kind of tell it how to do that. You can remotely attach through JMX, right? If you're not like if you're on a VM somewhere else, you can attach through JMX. So there's ways to do remote debugging of your applications. You don't have to be local or on the same machine. Um, Cryostat makes it Kubernetes friendly, and you can record um, thread dumps from multiple containers at a time. I have not tried it with 500, <laughs> but but you can record multiple containers at a time. So actually now I now I want to go try 500 because I want to find out if we can. Do no, because there are a lot of things, right? You have a sidecar container running. You could have your regular main process yeah. running. All and this could be a logging stack. As I said, operators could be running. Yep. All those things could matter. Yeah. Well, so. Come on, thing. Um, so, monitoring of Kubernetes is beyond flight recorder, right? Because flight recorder is about the. J Let's just do a new recording. Um, let's say recording. Let's do create. Another recording duration. Make it continuous. We'll just do. Did I, am I bounced out or something? What did I do here? All right, so I've got an operator. Hey, has anybody seen OpenShift? You guys know what OpenShift is? Like OpenShift's Red Hat to build a Kubernetes. We talk about it all the time. So probably if you've ever been to any Red Hat event, you've heard of OpenShift. Um, we talk about it all the time. So it's our build of Kubernetes, but it's got a bunch of other stuff in there, right? It's also got this UI and stuff, right? So this is an operator. I've installed the Cryostat operator. Um, I've got uh, all instances. Where's my Cryostat sample? My application URL. All right, now, so this is running. I've got one little example application running in this namespace. You can install it across the entire cluster, or you can install it in one namespace. I've got it inside of one namespace in here. It'll show you a little bit about like the topology. So I've got this application running here. This is my application running right here, and this is my cryostat piece running inside this name stat, namespace. Um, comes in and shows me. Let's. Uh, so I've, there's a number of things you can do. So the recordings here. Create a recording. Maybe maybe then I'll log back in. We can see this again. So this is going to give me my automated report. That first window that suggests things. We're going to. Or I think we need to start over again. All right. Let's create another recording. Another recording. Um, we'll do archive. We'll do continuous. Why is it not, all of a sudden, it does not like my security? Come on, thing. All right. Why is my security? Okay, this is great. Look. All right, log in. Come on. All right. Dashboard, recording. Are you going to show me the actual thing or are you going to create a new one? Why is the network stuff happening here? Um, so some of the things you can, I can do here, you can create rules to, to like determine when things will automatically be triggered. So you can come in and write rules here. I can give, it, I can give names to the rules. Is this why Zoom that this doesn't like this? Why is it not happy? Something's not happy, huh? Operators, installed operators, come on. Thing. Sample. Huh. Log in. All right, I'm logged in. I have a JVM. This grabs the JVMs that are running, right? Um, I have some automated rules that basically say 
you know, when this event occurs, like maybe we get to a certain amount of memory, automatically start recording, right? So I can set this up so it's gonna go ahead and like monitor things for me. Um, I can store my recordings, all this isn't happy with me at the moment. Um, I can archive recordings. Um, I can look at the events and I have these kind of templates of events that I wanna grab, right? And then I can configure security and stuff. So let's just let create a new recording. All right, we will do all and we'll do continuous and we'll call it another recording. All right, so let's see what's going on there. Now let's see if we're a little bit happier not with this older, older stuff. I can also come over and say we can, right, there we go. So this is very similar to the kind of window that we had from the Java Mission Control. And we can see like, okay, we've got some garbage collection, you know, issues maybe here. We've got some heap content, CPU load. There's some stuff going on. It looks like it could be problematic, right? Um, so some of the things I can do here, I can download this recording and open it up locally on Java Mission Control. So yeah, I want to allow downloads. So I can download that, I can pull it in, you know, locally. I can work with it locally the same way I'm used to working with things. I can view it inside of Grafana, right? So it's, it's I'm going to upload that to Grafana. Okay, very nice. So now we can come in, in uh, Grafana dashboard. I guess my, my Grafana dashboarding skills aren't that great, so this dashboard might be kind of crappy. Um, but you know, we can see we, we have, you know, going to the Grafana dashboard, our SREs, if we're using Cube, they'll be pretty used to looking at things this way. So this takes, the idea here is we will take what you can do with Java Flight Recorder, bring that to containers, bring it to Cube, and then let you do this remotely. Right, so you don't have to log in. You don't have to go and log into any you know particular pods. You don't have to take dumps that way. You can grab all your stuff this way. You can set up rules to automate it. You know, so you can say, okay, whenever I see these kind of these kind of configurations, kick this stuff off. Um, this you don't have to run it on OpenShift. This is you know everything we do is open source, right? So you can grab it, configure. You can run it on you know your lo local kube. You can run it on any, any Kubernetes, right? As long as you can run operators, you can run it. Um, it does require well, it doesn't require, but you should have uh, like you know SSL configured too, right? Just to make sure it's encrypted. Um, you can turn that off, but yeah, you probably shouldn't turn it off. <laughs> right? I yeah. I see the problem with this uh, two things. Are you using the oh. are you using the JMX port or are you using the memory mapped so that is, Java? That's good, yeah, good question. So how do you just grab this out of the container? Yeah, you do need to configure your container in your build. So in your Docker file, you'll want to configure the Java. So you have files. a you cannot you cannot do the op, the, the attach the operator. Attach the operator to a pre-existing Docker file. Um, no, you would have to go in with a command and do that. Yeah. Okay. So you, you do need to give flags for when you start your when you fire up your JVM, right? Okay. But yeah, so you just, you just tweak your Docker file. You tell it, okay, expose this port, right, and you're good to go. Okay. Another question I wanted to ask you earlier: mm -hmm. uh, It doesn't have any static data, does it? For example, can can I get stack trace out of it? You absolutely can get stack traces. Um, and as I look at the stack trace, can I atomically look at the value for a particular variable I know exists? So the answer is sometimes, right? So here's the default stuff. Um, well, I've gone through that. Sorry, I'm bouncing all over the slides. This is driving you guys nuts. Sorry about that. <laughs> we can go. Uh, um, OK, so um, the events here, what we have for events, every event has an event ID, right? Yeah. Um, has a timestamp and a duration that's based on CPU ticks. You can translate that if you want something. This is that's the easiest, fastest thing to do, and requires the least over, the least overhead to format, right? Because um, again, the idea is to be less than one percent of your you know of your overhead. Um, you get a thread ID, you get a stack trace ID if you're looking at a stack trace for errors, um, and then you have an event specific payload. So there is some payload in there, like you notice. When I created my own event, I gave it some very specific decorators, and one of the things I did was give it the message because I knew I was looking for a name, right? Because I, so, uh, I thought, like, if I, if I have a problem here, maybe it has something to do with the name, right? Maybe I'm choking on something there. Um, so the event, you can define your event-specific payload, and then it's going to depend. Like, what you're looking for will depend upon whether or, just depend upon whether or not that event has it. Let's look at some stuff. What were you that looking for? Stack trace ID will pertain to the complete JVM stack trace, or just the track, stack trace where the event was generated? Where the event was generated, I believe. Oh, yeah. yes, I think so, yeah. Um, do you have any errors? I don't tell who has a block. 
Um, I, can we drill down into that? I don't know if we could drill that. How we can? How well we can drill down into that? Let's look. Let me open up some other stuff. Here's some example ones that come. So there's a really good tutorial too on GitHub. I've got some links at the end of these slides. I think I have a link to the tutorial in it. Um, it's a little bit. Uh, yeah, here we go. This guy. All right. Well, I'll I'll fix that before I send it out. <laughs> oh, back. Um, there is a nice tutorial that has some good example files, and it can give you an idea of like what you're seeing in here. What was this? So this was a hot methods, right? So, so this is you know this method uh, int was called a whole a, a lot of times, right? Um, so depending upon what you're looking for, let's open up some of these other ones. Open up a file here. And we'll see, we were looking for like uh, exceptions, right? You want to see a stack trace? So thrown exceptions, right? So we can see, generate a lot of exceptions, right? We can j drill through in here in exceptions. It's quite a bit of exceptions, right? Let's just take a look at some of these. Go over here. On Zoom thing. All right. Oh, eh. Darn it. Can you guys? Can you see that? Okay. Or see it kind of a little bit anyway. So here you go. There, there's your message, right? <laughs> right, so you, so you definitely get some data, right? So you, so you can do some nice analysis in here, right? There you go, right? Is that kind of is that what you're looking for? Uh, yes, uh, I, I think you answered. Um, it doesn't replace or it doesn't contrast with the uh, profiler. You, you, you say, I'm doing a, a J map. Or even G code and then extract the JVM data out of it. It doesn't compete with that. This is purely dynamic, event-based. These things happen. Yep. They happen so quickly. I kind of think. Yep. And it's kind of like I, I like the analogy, and it makes sense to me why they called it flight recorder. Because like you think about like what that flight recorder in an airplane is doing, right? And you know all those things are happening. The airplane's doing all these things anyway. And it all, in fact, a buddy of mine used to write software for airplanes. And like they call it one thing. He said, I'm, I'm not sure I like this, but he said like when a pilot you know moves the the um, what do they call it? The, when the pilot moves the direction, it's like that's a vote, <laughs> right? Right. And other parts of the plane might have a different vote, right? The you know, the, the the automatic you know autopilot, right? Um, so uh, all those events happen, right? And the plane knows those things are happening. The flight recorder is just recording them, right? And so that's what flight recorder is doing. It's like these are all happening inside the JVM. Like this error got thrown, right? Got thrown as part of this with this message, you know, from this class, right? Um, and the flight, flight recorder just recorded the fact that it happened. And so now we can go back and analyze what was happening, you know, based on on this. So we can go see what this one is. I guess they're all the same. These are all the same errors, yeah. Um, so this is one of the, this little tutorial, like I said, it's a little bit old fashioned, but there is some nice stuff in here. You can go through um, this tutorial and open up these various types of exceptions to see what's in. There's also Java FX, I don't need that. But you know, memory leak, gar garbage collection, you can look at latency. I'm going to show you various ways to go through there. Memory leak? Mm -hmm. Yep. Look at memory leak. Uh, memory leak before. All right, so, so free physical memory, that tells us that's a problem, right? We're at 96.2%. Um, the most allocated type likely char, right? And it's allocated by demo object, right? So we would know demo, op can you guys read that? Yeah, so 
demo object's gonna be our class, right? And obviously this tells us right away, we're probably doing something weird in this class, right? So we don't even have to go much past the initial landing page here to get some idea into what's happening, right? So it does, it does do some nice stuff in here. Um, and so what, we can come here and see memory, let's go to garbage collection, or we can, go to, we can go to memory specifically here, right? So we can say live objects. We're getting a lot of lot objects here, right? So we can, we can drill down into these pieces. We can say, uh, yeah, you know, we'll go to these garbage collection events down here. It's collecting stuff all the time, right? And if we drill it up into here, we can see where some of these things coming from, right? Hash table. What was the class here? This is all basic, basic stuff, right? But it'll give us an idea of where some of this stuff is happening, right? Um, and, is it, and then we go back and look at our code. We, we can always add in our own events. And we can look at our event browser here, too. Kind of see what might be going on in here. Garbage collector, right? It doesn't look bad. Garbage collection, a lot of events. Some of these get kind of long, right? Yeah, so you can you can drill down into all kinds of stuff. Is that a question? Yeah? I'm just curious, how does this compare to OpenTelemetry? How does this compare to OpenTelemetry? Um, so the question was, like, how does this compare to OpenTelemetry? So um, I, what I would say is this is designed, as you see, it's designed to work with the JDK, right? So this is j very Java specific. Um, and it, it's, it was, it's designed largely to grab a process, you know, it, it's tapped into the internals. And in fact, it, where this came from was the JDK team used to actually use this in development of the, J, the JVM themselves, right? Um, and so this is geared towards one kind of thing, right? It's expanded, like Red Hat threw it onto Kubernetes because we love Kubernetes, right? Um, and we, like, we do a lot of stuff around Kube, um, but it was definitely not designed for Kube, right? It was designed for Java, right? Um, we just know that like a lot of people put Java in containers and run it on Kube, right? Um, and we have a lot of customers who run Java in containers on Kube, so we thought this would be a good good approach for us. So I would say this is this is much more laser specific, right? Where Open Telemetry is more of an API, all kinds of things can use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So question: So if I am running EKS, I'm not I'm not I'm not Open Shift. Yeah. To a running process, are we saying it, it is still possible? So you can uh, EKS, uh, you know, because EKS isn't the. You can run it on any kube. Um, this okay. is cryostat.io. If you if you want to install the operator on any kube, mm -hmm. you can do that. Um, yeah, you know, we make it a little bit easier, right? But I mean, there's guides for in installation, right? Where's installation? Get started, I guess. Yeah, installing cryostat operator. Like, so you can see, like, just go here, it'll show you how to install this stuff. I don't know for sure if it works on EKS or not, because I haven't tried it on there. Um, but it's all open source and all the documentation's right here. So. 